I hate to ask, Stephen, but I've already pulled out what little hair I have left. I think I'm being followed. I was looking for my Benson and Hedges in the Toyota last Tuesday. I always drop them in the passenger side, so it was weird when they weren't there. Figured they'd fallen under the seat. Ruffling around under there, I, I pulled out a tiny circuit board from the bottom. Stuck there, see? Sticky. I sent you a picture. Look at it. I've since found more. One lodged behind the shower head and another inside this microphone. Stephen, those conversations I had with Dr. Bruknenko have latched themselves to me like a Lyme disease tick. I need a special kind of fire to remove them. Who are we when we dream, and at any time really? Our smallest parts abandon us within the smallest seconds, leaving precious little behind except a yearning and yawning space. Celebrity Tumor presents Delivery Oi! You the cunt with all the quid, bruv. So I'm talking. <laughs> I have your story. My running, if you will. Uncle's in the rubbish business, so me and Lil Kev are rubbishmen. Only we's all in Argo and proper blank. Ain't a big firm, mind you, but we get on. You know what I mean? Mostly we move in Shanghai, Gucci and Fug brands and such. Kinda shy Uncle can flip real quick like. You asked me about that symbol, them three circles in it. Yeah, bruv, I, I seen him. Uncle had me picking up something from the Barry docks. Gotta see Baz and Tev about a box. Ah, don't worry, Uncle Pete's your boy. Snitches get stitches. I'm more like I got this, bruv. Anyway, I were dead chuffed to be asked. Reckon this run was special, like. Can't cock this up, else it'd be like that time Uncle gave Lil Kev a good bollocking. Oh, <laughs> bruv, that was brutal. He tells me this one's different. Tells me quite a payday in it for the lads that can make the trade. 500 quid each. Tells me to tap little Kev for the wing, but I've got other ideas. Uncle's thinking about Kev's estate car, the space and all. Don't reckon me voxel's up for it. Me? Thinks ain't no one gonna bother asking Kev he rode or not. Thinks this is my G, innit? Oh, me voxel's sweet. Modded up so Bev's up for one. Kev don't pull birds on account of his rotten earwax, and now he's always picking at his neck. Reckon he helps himself to himself, if you know what I mean. Hit the docks, boy -o. Devil there, on his usual perch. That chair looks to be from me grand school days. Cracked pink plastic and rusty legs. Loud at the docks, bruv. And boat horns and forklifts and shite. Fucking gulls, too. Shit everywhere. Tev looks up at me and smiles with them yellow teeth. I give him a wave. Tev tells me Bear's got the box in the tuck. Tug sloshing around in that manky froth you get round a harbour. Ain't keen to get aboard that boat. I don't fancy boats, and Baz got that scowl like someone's biting his end piece. Well, come on, lad. Baz barks like rabies and waves me on. It's the last one I do for that miserable git, you tell him that. Tug rocks about with the two of us on it. Baz got his hand resting on a box, smelling a dead cod. Box is styrofoam, football size and filthy. It's heavy, mate, steady on. Baz weren't lying. Feels like some cunt filled it with lead or something. Thick sellotape wrapped round it like no one's supposed to open it. Tev was chuckling as I passed him lugging that box back to the voxel. Let him laugh. My teeth still white and beautiful like. GPS in the voxel don't work no more, boyo. Bev asked it up that time she threw that coke on it. I'd wound her up that day. As she gets in it. 
uncle fitted me with a paper map. He always thinks of everything, that one. That's why he's head of the firm, innit? Map were wrinkled. Lil Kev always sitting on it when we go on runs for uncle. But I could find it. Up in Kinkoid, so I had to get stuck into the map reading. It ain't long to get there, but I ain't never been to Kinkoid. Boring cunt of a ride. The Vauxhall limped down Cardiff Road all them miles. Ain't nothing but trees and shite fields. Gotta keep me eye on the coin, bruv. Carthay Bone Garden's creepy as I tell you. Heaps of geezers moping around. Then, I get there. I mean, about, in the neighbourhood like. Seen a couple of birds staring at me. Probably checking the mods on me Vauxhall. <laughs> staring real hard like. That's typical, isn't it? Staring like that because they ain't never seen a real man before. Probably proper posh cribs up there. Not a council house in sight. Real canny abodes. Must be worth a bit of bronze. One thing hits me weird. As I get closer to the address I'm to visit, the houses on this avenue are all up for auction, for sales signs all over the place. I'll have to tell Uncle about these. Business to be had. They different, too. Like until this avenue, all them nice houses had them manicured gardens. Not these. These looked wild. Looked like them agents ain't been able to move them. Nobody walking around, either. Bloody ghost town in the middle of Poshville. Parked the car in, got out to leg it. Fucking house was all the way up this hill at the end of the avenue. Huge crib, too. Had them circle bits like you see on castles in the old films. Walked me ass right up to the front, heft in that mad heavy box. About to throw me back out with it. So as I sets it down and gives that big ass door a strong rapping. Nobody home? Well, that figures. But I'm there to collect, you know what I mean? I try peering in them huge windows, but the curtains are all smushed against the glass like something heavy's against them. Thick curtains, too. Like all them's the same like that, at least in the front. It was about this time I'd been regretting not bringing Kev along. Never know what you might run into in one of these runs. Oh, fuck it, I said. Ain't no hoodlum gonna have Pete. I was worried about seeming old bait creeping round the side of the house like that. It looks to me clearly not being from these ends. But as I've said, no one around. The back of that place was as unkempt as the front. Real hairy garden. There was a door in need of a proper painting and a buzzer next to it. Rusted mail slot, too. Well, not being one to mess about, I hit that doorbell straight. Could hear a muffled boom and shuffle. Kind of low shit like you hear when you're standing outside the club. Thought that's weird, innit? Waiting. Nothing. Hit it again. Same boom and rustling sounds. So now it's doing me head in and I can't be asked. Go over to the nearest window and get the same treatment with them drapes. Pressed hard against the glass so as no one can peer in. Only this one has a little opening through the fabric. Stick me face to the glass. You can see a grimy living room with all kinds of packing boxes strewn about. A lot of electronic bits laying round like from a computer or something. Then I sees him. Through the lace of them dirty curtains. Could just make out this huge charmer. Big old fat cunt. Morbidly so, as they say. But that ain't all. He ain't got nothing on. I mean stark. But he's bandaged up around where all these wires are going into him. Some of that gauze come loose and you can see the sores around where the copper had stuck into him. They run it out of him into some sort of big thing. Must be a computer, but fucked if I knows. Looks like a box made out of motherboards and other computer bits. He's got some VR business strapped to his head too. Covers most of his face. His mouth just hanging open there. Bit of drool sliding out. A bloody horrible seeing them things sticking out of him like that. Well, infirmed or not, I'm there to do a job, bruv. So I reach my hand out and slap that buzzer again. This time keeping me eye on the fat bastard. The second I hit that button, he starts flapping about like he's having fits or something. Bloody spastic. Made me sick, that. His arm flapped out like and hit the wall. That's where that low thumping were. Saw something else at that moment. An arse load of clocks lay about that room. Some on the wall, 
Some on the floor. Strange enough, innit? But all them clocks were all going anti-clockwise. Now, as you've probably picked up on, I don't scare easy like. But this had me frit. Hit that buzzer again. Same flapping about, low boom. But this time something shot out that rusty mail slot. An envelope. Now, when I tell you an envelope, this won't like what usual comes to mind. This were old. Real old. Had that fancy wax seal shite on it like you see in the cinema. Reeked, too. Smelt like a wet dog, but real sweet, if you can imagine that. Uncle had told me to trade the box for a letter, so this had to be it. Not feeling entirely comfortable leaving the package outside, I tried the door. Locked as a nun's crimp. Dropped that heavy fucker in front of the door and made my way back to the Vauxhall. Enough for enough. Ain't no calling the coppers in my line. So that subtracts an ambulance by the same reckoning. Thought about making like an anonymous ring, but reckon that would be putting me bollocks out for the world to see. They're pretty like the rest of me, but ain't free of charge. Unless you, Bev, of course. <laughs> Uncle paid up promptly, which ain't like him. I told him what I saw, and he told me to keep my pie holes shut. Said it were bad for business. Said it would be proper bad for me, too. But given what you're paying, <laughs> fuck him. I know what you must think of all this, Mark. But let me ask you this. How comfortable you feeling these days? I mean to say, he was talking about personal identity. I don't mean your driver's license. The good doctor was on a death trip. Had a good deal to say on dreams and mental illness. Drug states and amnesia. The change you see around you is palpable. The diminished relevance of conversations had in cafes, commuter trains, or behind salacious curtains is obvious. Susurrus mumble of empties. Voids to be filled will be filled. Delivery is a podcast distributed by Celebrity Tumor and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution non-commercial share alike international license. For information pertaining to the episodes, cast list and attributions, please visit deliverypodcast.com.